The search for life on Mars. Research in the Atacama Desert points to a possible obstacle. An international group of scientists has suggested that the instruments present in rovers sent to the Red Planet to collect and analyze evidence of past life, there may not be sensitive enough to make accurate assessments. New research conducted in what is considered the oldest desert in the world shows that the technology equipped with Martian rovers is not always able to detect signs of life on the surface of our planet, let alone on Mars. Chile's Atacama Desert contains sand and rocks rich in hematite and mudstone. Geologically, this region is quite similar to parts of the surface found on Mars. Which is why astrobiologists often use it as a model for the red planet. The desert is considered the second driest place on the planet. Only stones, dust and salt lakes. What could survive in such a place? It turns out that something could. A group of scientists in the desert used scientific instruments that are either already on Mars landers or rovers or will be placed on them in the future. They wanted to see if they would be as good at identifying biomarkers and DNA as laboratory instruments. They found that samples taken on Atacama contained numerous microorganisms of undetermined classification, which they called the dark microbiome. Further analysis also revealed a mix of biosignatures of current and ancient microorganisms that could barely be detected with state-of-the-art laboratory equipment. Scientists have had considerable difficulty identifying many of the organisms whose genetic material has been found. Existing databases turned out to be insufficient here. This showed that the equipment sent to Mars in search of life may not be sensitive enough. The researchers highlighted the need for more powerful tools. However, they also noticed that those sent to Mars are the result of a compromise between weight, durability and precision of measurements. But what do the research results tell us about the potential usefulness of the instruments used in the search for life on Mars? While they did manage to find numerous signs of life on Atacama, they may not be sensitive enough to do the same job on the Red Planet. Scientists believe that if the possible genetic material on Mars were really old and trace, there would be a risk that the tools used would simply not notice it. Besides, to confirm such a discovery, the samples taken would still need to be transported to Earth for full analysis. The research team responsible for the described research hope that their results will prove useful to NASA and ESA. Europe has a big problem. The continent has been in drought for years. Europe has been experiencing severe drought for years. Across the continent, groundwater levels have been low since 2018. This is not changed by extreme weather events such as local floods, although they may give the misleading impression that the water situation in Europe is not so bad after all. In 2020, the journal, Geophysical Research Letters, published an article by Eva Bergens, in which the author documented a significant water shortage in Central Europe in the summer months of 2018 and 2019. Since then, researchers have been looking at the problem much more closely. In the EU-funded global gravity-based groundwater product, G3P, project, Scientists used satellite gravimetry to observe the world's groundwater resources and document their changes in recent years. Data analysis by Torsten Mayer-Gur and Andreas Kavers of the Institute of Geodesy of the Technical University of Graz, to Graz, clearly shows that there has been no rise in groundwater levels in Europe. Researchers warn that this could have very negative and far-reaching consequences for the entire continent. The effects of the prolonged drought were visible in Europe in the summer of 2022. Riverbeds dried up, 
numerous water reservoirs and entire ecosystems related to them slowly disappeared. Dry soil is also a big problem for agriculture and energy. Nuclear power plants in France lacked cooling water, and hydropower plants could not function at full capacity either. Hence, energy shortages were recorded across the continent. How can the surveyors at Two Gras use space data for accurate groundwater calculations? At the heart of the G3P project are twin satellites called Tom and Jerry. The distance between them is about 200 kilometers. The one in the back, Tom, can't catch up with the one in front, Jerry, which is why they were named after the cartoon characters. The distance between the satellites is continuously and precisely measured. If they fly over a mountain, the satellite in front is initially faster than the one in the back due to the increased mass below it. After passing the mountain, it slows down a bit again. But the satellite behind it speeds up as soon as it reaches the top. After passing through, their relative speed settles again. These large mass distance variations are the main measurement variables for determining the Earth's gravitational field and are determined to micrometer accuracy. In one day, the satellites circle the Earth 15 times, which means that they cover the entire surface of our planet in a month. Two graphs can therefore provide you with a complete gravity map of the Earth every month. The computational effort is quite large. Measurements of the distance between the satellites are made every 5 seconds, which gives about half a million readings a month. On this basis, we then map the gravitational field, explains Torsten Mayer-Gur. However, a gravity map alone is not enough to determine the groundwater level. Satellites show all mass changes on Earth and do not distinguish between sea, lakes and groundwater. Torsten Mayer-Gur and his team, knowing the total mass, subtract mass changes in rivers and lakes, soil moisture, snow and ice from it. In the end, all that's left is groundwater. Such calculations require extensive international cooperation. Therefore, the 3GP project is staffed by experts with data on the mass of different types of water from Austria, Germany, Switzerland, France, Spain, Finland and the Netherlands. The effects of this cooperation show that the water situation in Europe has now become very uncertain. Torsten Mayer-Gur did not expect it on such a large scale. A few years ago I would never have thought that water would be a problem in Europe, especially in Germany or Austria. There are real problems with the water supply here. We have to bear this in mind, explains the scientist. According to the researchers, it is necessary to continue documenting the ongoing drought. And this requires the continued mission of satellites in space and further international cooperation. Therefore, the European Space Agency ESA and its American counterpart NASA will continue research together as part of the MAGIC, Mass Change and Geoscience International Constellation project.